1996. Madam Speaker, I wish to inform the House that the United Arab Emirates has not yet made any formal request for the opening of a diplomatic mission in Mauritius. In a letter dated the 17th of January 2018, our High Commissioner in Maputo informed the Ministry that, Ms. that Dr. Rashid El Afari, the Chargé d'Affaires of the Embassy of the United Arab Emirates in Mozambique, had verbally conveyed that its government was considering the opening of a diplomatic representation in Mauritius. From info, supplementary information which had just been supplied to me, uh, I have, there was a meeting between my predecessor and uh, the Sheikh Al Nayan, the Minister for Foreign Affairs of the UAE, in April 2018, where the UAE government uh, said that they were very interested in having a better representation in Africa. And the, subsequently, the UAE authorities requested information pertaining to immunities, privileges, and facilities that would be granted by the host state that is Mauritius. Sheikh Abdullah Al Nayan was to undertake an official visit in October 2018 to Mauritius. However, the visit was postponed due to a pressing regional crisis. The UAE government has, in November 2018, requested the agreement of the government of Mauritius for the appointment of His Excellency Ambassador Al Katani, the current ambassador to the UAE to Maputo, as non resident ambassador of the UAE to Mauritius, and the request is being under process. Yes, uh, Madam Speaker, uh, I understand that. Uh, in the case of Mr. GP, you can't give uh, the information, I mean the figures. But can I ask the Honorable Minister if he is aware that the case of Mr. GP is very similar to the case of the brother of Mr. Prakash Mantua, whereby a huge amount was invested. And both cases, both persons involved, they have been cleared by the FIU, by the MRA, by the Integrity Reporting Board, and I have all the letters and all the documents which I shall not table, but I will give it to the Honorable Minister because it seems that he has not all the information. Okay? So, can I know exactly, without getting into the precise details, why there is this deux poids deux mesures in the case of Mr. Mantura and in the case of Mr. GP? Uh, speaker, I don't know whether there has been deux poids deux mesures, but as I have said in my uh, reply, there are only certain information that I can give to the House, and uh, the others, of course, uh, I'll try to find out. Uh, because I don't manage the NPFL myself on a day-to-day -day basis. So I'll have to get back to, to, to the company to find out. Okay, you don't have the information. Yes, I know that you don't manage it on a daily basis, but it falls under the purview of your ministry. So, uh, can I also ask the Honorable Minister, but in the case of Mr. GP, he, he passed away. It's only his heritage, his hires, who are now doing all the procedures. But the NIC wrote them an official letter. And they came to NIC office in December. They signed all the papers. And the officers told them that the money will be deposited in two weeks. Now it's been four months. Yeah. They don't have any reply. Please. So, can I ask the Honorable Minister? if he can look into the matter and see to it that justice is being done to these people. Positive, Madam Speaker. Yes, yes thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, the Honorable Minister just stated to the House that it's been 13 years that Mauritius has been buying petrol products with Mangalore refinery. Uh, can I ask the, and it is a, a contract of about 26 billion rupees per year, so therefore can I ask the Honourable Minister, what is the reason, what is the rationale behind the decision of government of not buying the petrol from Mangalo refund? Madam Speaker, the recourse to attend the exercise is of course more transparent. And uh, secondly, I must say that uh, there is also a possibility now of procuring petroleum products, that is white oil and uh, black oil, from uh, two different suppliers. 
uh, as we are aware that in such a technical issue of buying petroleum products, does the ministry, does his ministry, STC, has the appropriate expertise and knowledge? Because in this type of discussion, as we have witnessed it in the past, if we don't have this expertise uh, and in a bargain, in a deal, Mauritius can be worse off in terms of negotiation. And, and it has happened in the past. So can I ask the minister, is he satisfied that STC can negotiate this contract with appropriate expertise? Well, Mr. Madam Speaker, that uh, STC has appointed a consultant to work on the tender documents and uh, the tenders have been launched. I have the, uh, had the opportunity of going through the document and uh, it looks uh, to me very professional. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, the Honourable Minister mentioned that there will be international tenders in relation to this issue, fair enough. But he also mentioned that two suppliers, uh, petroleum products, can be procured from two suppliers. May we know the names of these two suppliers? Oh, Madam Speaker, tenders have been launched, and the suppliers have the opportunity of uh, bidding either for two types of petroleum products, that is white oil or black oil, or both of them. We have seven products that we import. Yeah, they can purchase. SEC has the opportunity now to buy from two suppliers instead of one. 